I personally uh, uh, consider culture as a very important uh, instrument in my work. Uh, I, I think the culture is really uh, the very important tool of the soft power we have in, in our hands. Uh, I use it in my uh, previous position as well. In China we have started a very impressive program which was called Embassy Art and this gave me the possibility to put together the Czech and Chinese uh, artists, mainly uh, the fine arts but also poets and others. So before I came here in the United Kingdom uh, I made an analysis what else we can do uh, to promote more the Czech-British relationship, uh, make them stronger and more useful for the people. And we have identified that culture is a very uh, promis promising field. So uh, I started to, to make a sondage here in the uh, in UK, uh, uh, London, but other, uh, other parts as well, what we can do uh, specially. And uh, we came to the, to the conclusion that fine arts is something we can perfectly develop here. Uh, uh, I uh, started in London, but then we moved to, to Birmingham and uh, we organized an exceptional exhibition of, um, uh, of uh, our artists in, in, uh, in Ber Birmingham. First Pavel Brazda and then Vladimir Kokoria uh, together with Icon Gallery. And this was a very great success. Uh, we made uh, then uh, the sculpture uh, exhibitions. So uh, the, the art for me, it's just instrument, it's a tool uh, which helped me to create a wave on which other uh, Czech, Czech product, Czech, idea, Czech, Czech, ideology, uh, Czech technologies can come. Uh, so this is uh, what uh, we do here with, with, with the art. And of course, uh, speaking in more concrete terms, we uh, put together with uh, Škoda uh, UK, uh, they are supporting us very much because also for them it's useful. So uh, promoting, promoting art, that means promoting the flag, uh, which is uh, uh, very important for others who are coming to the, to the field of the Czech-British uh, relationship. I think that the culture diplomacy and creating the national brand is the same important for uh, Czech Republic as for Guernsey. Uh, I had been there and uh, I witnessed uh, the, the beauty of, of, the, of, the, of the country, uh, the people and uh, the potential of the people uh, and the, the cultural heritage. So I think the, the Guernsey it's, uh, has a huge potential now uh, to go ahead and uh, with, the, uh, with the culture policy and create even more stronger uh, brand of the, of the island which helps there then to promote other interests uh, uh, in, the, in the world. I, I'm very much happy that we have found together with uh, our friends and with David Umars uh, the point in which we can unite uh, culturally, historically and uh, this uh, great story of the Czech pilots uh, who defended uh, the, the, the Guernsey uh, space and the, the airspace there and they were shot it down by, by, uh, by Germans. It's a, it's a great story, it's a great uh, motive we have. And so I'm, I'm extremely happy that uh, the, the young uh, painter made uh, the portrait of one of the uh, Czech pilot, pilots, uh, Jaroslav uh, Novak. Uh, and we will have a possibility now to show this uh, here in London and perhaps in the Czech Republic. About two years ago to the day, in this very place, I had the privilege to meet His Excellency Libor Seka, the Czech ambassador to the UK. It became very apparent that Libor and I have a common passion for the arts. And um, uh, one of the key ethos of Art for Guernsey is to promote uh, Guernsey's country brands through cultural diplomacy projects. And um, I was so pleased and so impressed by what uh, Libor explained how the Czech Republic implements cultural diplomacy. During that conversation, uh, Libor and I felt really aligned. So uh, very kindly, Libor invited uh, me and some uh, of the members of chamber to the, to the embassy in London. So we went there for lunch and we started to discuss uh, what could be done to build bridges between the two communities, between Czech Republic and Guernsey. And um, he then suggested that I should take uh, part 
in a field trip with another half a dozen of British curators uh, for a few days in, in Prague, which was an amazing opportunity because A, I could meet and build relationship with uh, other British curators, but then most importantly, um, we could connect to the contemporary scene in Prague and in Czech Republic. We could meet with national artists, visit their studio, and um, uh, meet with some of the, uh, the key uh, museum directors and curators. An exquisite experience that created the right context to stimulate my thinking and try to search on how to build a project together. When I came back to Guernsey, uh, I felt quite inspired and quite informed as well uh, in terms of uh, what sort of project we could do. And uh, I started to look for a catalyst. I started to look for a reason, or for substance to, uh, to do that project. And then uh, one day I discovered that the airport uh, in the digital war monument uh, that uh, uh, Yaroslav Novak, uh, a Czech pilot who volunteered um, to fly for the RAF, uh, lost his life in, in Gunzi Sky in May 1943. And that was the substance around which we articulated that, that cultural diplomacy project, which is about telling the Czech people, we understand your culture, here is a piece of art that pays tribute to one of your unsung heroes. We're sorry for your loss, and we want to be your friend right now in the present. And two years later, this is how we say it, uh, Art for Guernsey commissioned Sally Edego Lightly, local artist, to, um, to basically deliver that wonderful piece of art that will go on a journey to build a bridge between Czech Republic and Guernsey. I'm Sally Golightly. I'm a figurative artist and I have been painting people and figures, portraits for about the last 10 years. I had an exhibition on at the Gatehouse Gallery in December. At that exhibition I had a painting of a self-portrait with a cat, which was a kind of a slightly unusual painting for my own body of work and David approached me after that exhibition and suggested that I might be interested in um, painting an RAF pilot who was from the Czech Republic who came down off Guernsey during World War II but he specifically kind of pointed to that painting of uh, the self-portrait with the cat so I always had that in mind that he wanted something not necessarily a kind of very formal war portrait that you might see kind of typical of like, for example, Sargent or in the yeah, Imperial War Museum, but something a little bit more, um, just a little bit different. It wouldn't just be a portrait of the pilot, but there would be more of a personal element to it. Um, I spent quite a lot of time researching in the pilots called uh, Yaroslav Novak and I was lucky enough to come across quite a lot of information through the Roll of Honour which is a list of um, pilots who came down in the seas around Guernsey during World War II but also through sites which were from the Czech Republic because it, it turned out that you know he had quite a career behind him and the more I dug the more I realised that there was quite an interesting story not only his life but also the last hours of his life. I work in oil on linen as, as often as I can because um, it is a medium which I think is just so versatile. I love the way that I can layer it and create texture and the kind of the subtlety in the colours. For me it's just, you know, this is the palette that I always use. I always use the same five colours in all my paintings. So this is my palette and it's just automatic. I'm on autopilot when I'm mixing colours. I don't really have to think about it because I know the palette so well. I wanted quite a, um, a large canvas. I also chose quite a rough weave linen. For some reason I just felt like that was quite kind of reminiscent of the war. So it's, quite, it's very coarse, it's the coarsest linen I could buy. Um, and I started with the pilot. The most important thing for me was that I got him in and down and that he was kind of front and centre.
I really enjoyed this imagery of a pilot in a pilot's outfit. I was really drawn to that when I was looking through images and looking, doing my research. Um, and I only had a kind of passport photo headshot to work from, but I really wanted to give him a body because there's something quite iconic or memorable about, about that image. I've also used uh, aluminium metal leaf for the Spitfires. I really felt it served its purpose because the aluminium really represents the kind of the fragility of these planes. Um, and I just didn't really feel that I could portray that in the same way through the medium of paint. I feel this, this work encompasses quite um, a few different artistic references. Um, first of all was Emil Filler and Emil Filler um, was an incredible artist who unfortunately spent the war in concentration camp and really saw the, the kind of the horrors of war and he created a series of drawings after and during those war years and post-war years depicting the war through the means of Greek stories, through the Greek gods, but also through kind of monsters and, and really getting into the kind of the psychology and the, the torment that he suffered. I have the two kind of serpent monsters on the horizon representing that dark side of war, the, the, the part that which is just too horrible to, to kind of think about. Um, and then I also um, have always had an obsession with uh, a Czech artist called um, Frank Kupka who is a brilliant colorist and portrait painter. His self-portrait, which is a study in yellow, is one of my favorite pieces of work um, and I often refer to it. And as this was a piece which is very much themed by the pilot's background, I thought, well, maybe I can look into Kupka and I found one of his paintings called The Family or Family Portrait from 1910 beautiful painting of what you can you can interpret it as you like but you know um, a mother and a daughter or two sisters and a dog and I just thought you know I'll never really know the story of this pilot but a common theme for a lot of people during the war is that you know they lost family or family you know lost their sons. I wanted there to be a lot of information in the painting for the, it to really represent the kind of the chaotic nature of life in general, but for him to be standing as though he is above all of that now, and for him to just seem incredibly calm and serene and to compositionally stand through, so that although there's a lot going on in the painting, the first thing you notice really is him and his presence. Um, and this kind of play between calm and chaos is just one that I'm very much interested in in general, um, but it's you know, it really does reflect the kind of the chaos of war, um, but also the chaos of family, leaving, you know, the thoughts of leaving family behind, or potentially, you know, he's, um, he's above all of that now, his head is with his family, um, as in these last moments, and he's left behind him at his feet, looking down kind of the plains, um, which he stands above. The bottom half of the painting took a little bit longer to develop, I, I needed it to have a lot of weight compositionally, so to balance the top, but I also wanted it to be, you know, representing the darker side. Um, and in a way, you know, it's much easier to play into a happy family than the dark, horrible, you know, and you're really facing it yourself. So that, that was more, more difficult and I, I sat on it for quite a long time just compositionally thinking about different options and how to make it work. The sea was very prominent in um, the descriptions that I read. That imagery when I was reading this story was just so strong. I really felt like it was important to have that depicted in the painting. Um, but there were problems with regards to how to balance that with with the more colourful top side of the painting. Um, and I also wanted to have the, the planes flying away from Guernsey. If the planes are flying away from Guernsey then, um, and it's evening, then I know in the summer that the sunset would be behind Guernsey, but also there was so much um, um, firing and gun shooting from the island 
from Castle Cornet, from, you know, Gerberg, um, all these points, that the island would just be a light. So I had, you know, I had this vision of kind of quite, quite bright, strong, um, colourful sea where all of this light was reflected. But then I just realised that actually it needed to be just dark and quiet and and almost black um and quite quite sinister in a way um because it's almost somber and you know they're flying away they've just lost one of their men um and it's not such a colorful picture really so trying to weave this all together was very important for me yeah it was um an absolute joy to do this commission because it was not only um, a fascinating story but also it was very humbling to think well this is just one story there were so many stories and just to um, give recognition to this one one person is very meaningful and that kind of really gave me goosebumps and made me feel quite connected um, with him especially because the descriptions of of his this this attack were so vivid. They flew over um, in order to attack twelve enemy boats, which were docked in St Peterport. It was extremely rough, and they flew over at wave top height through a very narrow corridor. It was three one two squadron, but also three one three squadron, which is another Czechoslovakian squadron. And they did manage to attack these boats, and um, they thought that they had been more successful than they actually were. I think they managed to attack four, but they didn't sink any. Um, but the flank coming from the island was just immense, and it, that evening was described as absolute hell. Um, and and quite early on, I think, uh, Yaroslav was um, hit in the tail, and he tried to gain enough height to parachute but he couldn't because they were he couldn't gain any more height than I think 100 feet. I do hope that on the one hand people may look at the painting and and see a really interesting story behind it of of Novak who was actually his friends called him Yardeski. I think that must have been his nickname. Um, so that they can understand an insight into one life, but also that amazing um, selflessness of him being from the Czech Republic and volunteering his services to the RAF, and then you know coming to Guernsey and attacking enemy boats here. What really struck me, I think, is the this transcript and how incredibly in a way kind of not blasé but they just say well you know good goodbye and good luck and he says you know goodbye boys just like how at this the end of your life this is just so such a kind of civilized way to, <laughs> to to say goodbye to your friends i mean that really really struck me um and i guess that bravery that i guess this is what the, the mentality was for these pilots you know it's like okay this is my time now. You know, goodbye, boys, and good luck. And and that really, really struck me when I read his story the first time. Um, so I think that that is probably the, one of the most powerful things about his story um, that I've that I've certainly taken away, and that I would want people to to um, yeah to also kind of feel the power of of those words, his final words. Yeah. It starts its journey here in a few days. We'll open the exhibition. Um, and then that and the film that we are making to, um, to give the context of the project will go in residence in the Czech Embassy in London and then to a major museum in, uh, in Czech Republic. I think uh, we will use the opportunity to send very, very significant Czech painters to Guernsey, to Ireland, uh, to, uh, uh, to see the, the, the country, to feel the history and, and nature, and to create something in response to this fantastic picture made by the Guernsey painter. So uh, Vladimir Kokolia and Franciszek Skala are the, those who uh, will be nominated by the Czech side and will be uh, sent to the island uh, to work together with a uh, local artist and to create 
the piece of art which will even more uh, unite us and make the friendship between the Galicia and Czech Republic stronger. Mirek Ambrose, one of the national curators, calls the Moulin Wet Valley the Valley of Light. And so their national artists will go uh, to Moulin Wet and respond to the body of work of Renoir and produce artworks that will be connecting deeply to our cultural heritage. Last year we started at the embassy the, the program which is called Never Forgotten and uh, in, in the framework of this program I tried to go and to see all the graves of Czechoslovak uh, uh, soldiers on the UK soil and there are more than 310 uh, the graves. Uh, so this is a very important moment for us. Uh, this year we will celebrate again uh, 80 years since the arrival of the Czechoslovak soldiers to the British soil, to the, they arrived to Liverpool. So uh, having the portrait of the Czech pilot or Czechoslovak pilot from Guernsey, it's, it's very timely, it's very, uh, uh, it's, it's very much fitting to, to the framework of the, of the celebration we do. And the Czech people uh, uh, are very much involved in, 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 in this history. They, they are uh, focusing on, on this issue with big attention. So uh, I'm very much convinced that once they see uh, the portrait of the uh, Czechoslovak pilot from Guernsey, uh, they will be very, very touched. Uh, this will be some very strong emotional impact on them. And uh, without any, any doubts, they will understand even better that we have a very good friends on Guernsey. And uh, this will create, uh, I would say, another enhanced base for future cooperation.
A já jsem velice šťastný, že jsem dneska mohl být tady v Gernci na místě, kde byl sestřelen náš letec Jaroslav Novák. Byla to pro mě velmi, velmi dojemná vzpomínka, velmi krásný akt, vzpomínkový akt. And, když jsem byl v Británii a vlastně jsem viděl a navštívil hroby 311 československých vojáků a potom jsem viděl i ty, kteří se nevrátili z misí, kteří ne, nemají hrob a mezi nimi jsem viděl jméno Jaroslava Nováka v Rany mít nedaleko Londýna. A tak jsem nikdy netušil, že se dostanu na místo, kde je došlo k této tragédii a kde on zemřel. A to, že jsme tady dneska byli, tak skutečně mě naplnilo takovou hrdostí. A, a jsem rád a děkuji všem za, za možnost být tady a za tu fantastickou myšlenku uspořádat tento vzpomínkový akt. Děkuji i hudbě, která hrála nádherné kvarteto a všem, kteří nám ty podmínky pro krásné završení celého projektu Never Forgotten umožnili. Děkuji. Well, I think it's, uh, it's an incredible honor for us to uh, welcome His Excellency, uh, Mr. Libor Sekia, Ambassador of the Czech Republic to the UK, and Sabrina. I think it concludes a project that took two years, and um, also the circumstances of the filming. Um, I felt privileged to listen to this wonderful quartet of musicians paying tribute to uh, Jardeski. And also I felt touched because I felt that he was with us today. He, he really became somebody, really like a human being. Uh, and we, I think we got very close to him, uh, thanks to the, this, uh, this event. And, uh, and I feel it's the, it's the right way to conclude this project.